So every morning I come out to the garden and do a little inspecting. And you know, it is just that time of the season. We're in the, the mid of our summer heat where bugs are just, you know, coming out. And so I make sure that I check all the vegetables every day. So here on the tomato plant, I see that there is some bug damage on these beautiful tomatoes that I just saw the other day that were not damaged. Unfortunately though, they have been attacked by the army cutworm. And the cutworm can really devastate your crops. They will cut your seedlings off right at the base and chew them. Um, they're nocturnal, so they come out um, at night and lay their larva, the, the moth, and then they will hatch onto your plants. And as they grow, they'll just eat away at the plant. And as you can see, this one here has definitely done damage to about three of my tomatoes. But nevertheless, it's not the end of the day. I do have other tomatoes to harvest. So um, my yellow zucchini plant here is um, kind of pittering out. It is actually losing its traction. I will probably be pulling it out within the next day or so and just putting in a new plant. And I'll let that one be the zucchini plant for the fall harvest. And I'll also plant about two more. I don't need a lot of zucchinis um, because zucchinis do not store for long, long term. They need to be eaten in a shorter period of time. Um, so I like to eat them mostly fresh. Two above organs left. Oh no, are you serious? Yeah, that's it. There's a murder. Oh, there's one. There's one. just picked up some more of our chick babies and I'm so excited about it I actually wanted to buy every single one of them that they had and I just held myself back from doing that <laughs> because I don't have I, I really do have the accommodations for them but I don't know if hubby really wants like a zillion chickens right now so um, my thought process was I was going to purchase all of the Borf, um, Orphingtons that they had and I was going to give Raising Meat Birds a go and see how, you know, before I just jump in and just order a, a, a lot of meat birds. And so yesterday when I went they had more but today they only had three left. So I purchase the three now that means that with three buff Orphingtons I literally would just use them as um, layers so they would just be for eggs um, I don't think that I would eat one of them I won't <laughs> but I just I won't I can't so but um, but anyway I am really curious um, with raising my own meat because I know that home raised food and is always best it is always fresh it's going to taste better the quality of the meat is going to be better and so i know that from growing my own food i can only imagine what raising your own meat um would be the difference it would be so um yeah i really want to give that a grow especially if my family um, eats chicken so you never know i did look to, uh, the heritage breeds can be uh, raised as meat birds so it's not unheard of or anything like that um, and a lot of people of course they get the um, broiler chickens because they grow really fast and things like that so um, 
I don't know. I had always wanted to get a, a heritage breed and raise it um, and instead of a hybrid. So um, I don't know. I'm going to see uh, my thoughts on it uh, because they still have um, some Rhode Island Reds. I bought all the rest of the Buff Orphantons, which I'm really excited about the Buff Orphanton because I've heard good things about it. Um, and the Barrett Rocks, the Barrett Rocks. I purchased those birds because those were the ones that were killed by the raccoon that came into the coop. So, um, and since then, we've tightened up the coop. You know, there are so many other things I wanna do to my coop and I'm sure that I will. Um, so I'm going to take you all along with it, me on that journey as I do make any changes on my coop. And guess what? I can't wait to share our little chicky babies with you. Come on. paper towels on the bottom and I put pine shavings on my beds put a nice little layer of shavings to catch the catch the poop okay you want to catch the poop and then when the, when it goes to the paper towel you can just lift it up all of it and put it in your compost bin all right so that's the first step all right friends so the next thing you want to do is get you a heat lamp and what i like to do is i like to put the heat lamp on the container like that but what i do is i don't want it to um be directly on the you know directly on them like that i think i see a spider Hold on. okay so um yeah i'll just kind of angle it upward like that so they can still feel the heat, but it's not directly pointing down. I'll just kind of angle it on the side there. And it's protected with this metal um, shield here, so it's not directly on this plastic here. All right, and then after that, excuse me, cheeky babies, you know how to get up there. <laughs> so the next thing I do is I just put in a feeder and the feeder has some food. I'm gonna add um, a little more food to the um feeder but they're they're so small they're only like a week old so they don't need a, a lot of food in there okay try to put it on the bottom here so they can all right so there's some chick starter feed in in the feeder we'll fill that up a little bit more for them and then i'm going to clear out just a little area right here for the waterer um and we'll put the water in here all right, so I just put a few rocks in there. They've already kicked some <laughs> wood chips. Those, uh, the mulch, little pine, well, I should say they're shavings, not wood chips. They've already kicked some shavings. I'm just gonna get them out in the water because I'll have them in a temporary little um, uh, brooder over there. All right, so I like to put, you know, some stones or rocks in here. When I was reading about chicks, um, when I first got my chicks, I would, I understood that they could drown in this this water here as shallow as it is they could possibly drown so i have tons of rocks outside i just washed them off and i just put some all the way around that waterer until they get a little bigger where they won't get um you know get in there and drown all right so that's that now so we have our waterer food you got your lamp you got your shavings in there with your paper towels on the bottom there. So now only thing you need is your chicks, right? All right, so here we have our little baby chicks. And isn't she cute? She's only a week old and she's starting to develop. Her little wings are starting to come out. These are like five, six days old, but it's about seven days they'll start getting their little um, color on their little wings. And this is a, um, bo buff, Lord, this is a buff, or Orphanton? Buff Orphanton. Am I saying that right? <laughs> a little Buff Orphanton. Come on, girl. And then we have the Barrett Rock. 
Yeah, so cutie. Look at that little cute baby. Yeah. Come on. And then we have. Oh, you wanna. These are. That's the Rhode Island red right there. You don't want everybody to see you? Come on. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you didn't leave you by yourself. Look, the little Buff Orpington's crying because she thought she was left all alone and she wasn't. Oh, oh, look at that one just pecked me. You better not be a rooster. All right. Oh boy. Uh-huh, because that's the second time that she pecked at me, that little black one. And usually, you know, Gray did that. Gray was a rooster right here. So what I'm gonna do now, guys, is I'm gonna go ahead and turn my lamp on and get the station set up. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a little bit. <laughs> I was like, why is everything cute when it's a baby? I know, they're so cute. They're sweet little babies. Look at, look at, on top of there. Come down. I'm trying to do it. Okay, so now the heat lamp is on and um, when they get cold, they can kind of hover around underneath the heat lamp. I'm gonna take this food out in just a little bit um, because they don't eat all day, um, but um, I do keep it in up until about mid part of the day and I'll take it out and then I'll reintroduce it to them in the morning. <laughs> what do you think? What do you feel like? Is she soft? It's furry. furry. Furry, yes. Yep. What is it? Black one and a yellow one. Let's see. This guy like, what is that? Look at the chickies. Look. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> nah. That thing is smaller than you. What? Yeah, but it's too small. You gotta be gentle with her. You gotta hold her with your hand, like cuff her you don't like, like that with the other hand. Maybe. There you go. She's a little baby, only a few days old. <laughs> yeah. you wanna touch black yeah. You wanna touch a black one? She's scared like that, we just rub her back like that so she can calm down a little bit. She said, what's going on? <laughs> yes? You cup her with your other hand like that. There you go. <laughs> it's <laughs> I know. Black ones, they think they can fly already. <laughs> and they can't. 